Uh, you already know that Theresa May has uh, survived to fight another day, actually another year. They can't run against her or try to uh, get a no-confidence vote going over this whole Brexit brouhaha uh, for at least that long. A U.K. member of Parliament, Andrew Percy, who was, uh, voted in her favor, joins us right now. Um, sir, very good to have you. Pleasure to be here. Nice to be here. Good evening. You backed the prime minister. Why? Well, I think she's the best person to get us through this. And it, it, she's all, it's almost as if whoever is the prime minister at the moment is irrelevant to the process, because the problem we have is getting this withdrawal agreement with the EU through Parliament. And, you know, the House of Commons behind me here is packed full of people who are you know, who lost the referendum, they campaigned for Remain, they were uh, on the wrong side of the public, and they're making this process as difficult as possible. So it barely matters who the Prime Minister is. If you change the head, nothing changes in terms of the arithmetic behind me. So let me ask you, Andrew, is it your feeling that the March 29th deadline, I mean, that's the make-or-break time, which something ha has to happen, uh, that's the formal break, I guess. Uh, how hard and fast is that? Well, I mean, we leave on the 29th of March at 11 p.m. London time. That's written into law here. That's what the people voted for. Uh, you know, the Prime Minister's preferred option, and, I, and my preferred option as somebody who voted for and campaigned for Brexit, is that we leave with a deal with the European Union. Uh, if we don't leave with a deal, then the default position is we leave with a no-deal situation, and that raises a whole set of... Uh, problems and challenges, uh, but it's also something that I think the majority of members of Parliament are dead set against and will do everything they can uh, to prevent. So unless we get this deal through, uh, then it's anybody's guess as to where we head next on this. You know, I got to read from it here and just on my side of the pond here and that, that many of your colleagues figured we don't flip over Theresa May, but we'd rather her be at the helm of this disaster than any one of us try to challenge her at this time. But post the explosion, then we'll come in. What do you think? Well, I mean, I, I don't think this is a disaster, actually. I think leaving uh, the UK, uh, leaving the EU is a good thing. But I think clearly a lot of colleagues last night, but when she came and spoke to the to caucus, she uh, said at the start of her uh, speech that she would, wouldn't be leading us into the next election. So I think she's recognised that that was probably quite important for getting a few people on side. But I think there are colleagues who think, look, you know, Brexit is no doubt a, a challenge. The country is still quite divided on the issue. So, you know, if she gets us through this, uh, gets Brexit delivered, uh, then it's probably time to start looking for a new leader, is what a lot of colleagues will be thinking, uh, who isn't perhaps tainted by the challenges we've had over the last two years. And that probably did help uh, swing a few votes in her favour last night. But, of course, by announcing she's going, you know what politicians are like. People start jockeying for no, position. No, you're, you're so, uh, so it right. probably just sets off... <laughs> it probably works sets the same in our the country leadership. as well. Uh, you well, know, I mean, it, we... Know. Yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. I would just say absolutely. I mean, it's the same on both sides of the pond. Uh, as soon as somebody announces there's going to be a vacancy at the top, people start jockeying for it. I always question the consensus when it says that Brexit is dead or it's a bad idea. Obviously, British uh, voters, referendum voters two and a half years ago felt otherwise. I'm told polls indicate they feel the same way, if not more so now. And then I'm looking at the troubles in France, the troubles in Italy, Germany on the brink of a recession. Uh, maybe you guys were wise to reconsider being part of that club. I think we were. I mean, you have to remember this was an anti-establishment vote. So a yes. lot of people, particularly in this city here, have hated it. A lot of big uh, interest groups have hated it. Uh, most members of parliament, particularly on the other side of politics, hated it. Um, but the public, you know, despite all of the threats that were, 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 were doled out to them in the run-up to the referendum about what would happen and all the rest of it, a million people would lose their jobs, the economy would go into immediate recession. Um, uh, despite all of that, the public uh, looked at what was happening in Europe, looked at the undemocratic nature of the EU uh, and said, you know what, that's not for us. Uh, the future lies outside of there, being in charge of our own borders, our own laws. Um, uh, and, and, and I'm pleased that we made that decision. And I think what's happening in Europe proves why we will be proven right in the long run. It's just a shame that a lot of people here uh, in the establishment, uh, particularly in the House of Commons, uh, still haven't reconciled themselves to the fact that they're lost. Yeah, and the consensus has been routinely overturned. Uh, we'll see. Andrew Percy, thank you for taking the time. Pleasure. Thank you. Anytime.